Hey, welcome back to the Glycogen Cycling channel. So today is a slightly different video. It's not directly cycling related, but basically I just wanna show you my video workflow, everything I do to get a final video ready and put it out to you guys. So I'm gonna go over how to put data overlay on top of my race footage, my group ride footage, etc., etc. So without further ado, let's head to the computer and get started. Once you have your memory card imported, you're gonna open it up here and it may be called no name, it may be called something else depending if you named it differently. But you're gonna open this up and you're gonna to head to your files. So one thing I, I should note here is GoPro, if you are doing a long video, so like if you're doing like an hour long crit or you know, anything over like 15, 20 minutes, GoPro is going to split your file into multiple files, which in my opinion is just a pain. They claim it's because if like a part of the file gets corrupted for whatever reason, then at least you're going to have part of your footage and not, you know, the corrupted part. Um, so it doesn't corrupt the whole file basically. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if that's actually does anything, but regardless, this is what happens. So you're going to notice if you look at the file names, it starts with, you know, whatever name or whatever number, the lowest one is going to be your start, your starting file, the first file you recorded. So in my, for my case, it's one, three, seven, nine. Now, when you do a long video and it records into multiple multiple files like I was just talking about, it's going to add another it's going to add an extra one in front of it. So the next file in this sequence is going to be 11379 and then after that it's going to be 21379. So pay attention for that when you're importing your footage because this one, this one and this one are all in order. And then once this one's done, I stop the camera and I start it again and then it's going to start a new number, so 1380 one one three eight zero two one three eight zero so if you're on mac like i am what i'd recommend or what i do is i open up imovie since it's the fastest exporting software you can get on mac uh hands down so basically i took these three files that i want to stitch into one and i'll get into why in a section second while we're doing that I put this one in and then I put this one in and then I put this one in and here we are. So now they're all in order. And once this is done importing in a few moments, we're going to export that into one file. All right, so here we are, import is complete. And then we're gonna go up here. We're gonna say file. And then you're gonna choose your resolution. So. I always do the max with so 1080p, 60 frames per second. And in, in compression, I usually just do faster because otherwise, uh, you know, it's gonna take forever. And quality, do high, because ProRes, look at look how big your file type is gonna be. It doesn't do any difference. So just choose high, keep that file size down, and time it takes to export down. And then we're gonna do next, and you're going to choose where you want to save this file at. So you're gonna see all my files here. What should we call it, guys? Let me know in the comment. What should we call it? Video work flow. If I could type over my microphone. Um, so we got there, and then we're gonna save it in that folder. And then we are going to wait for this to export. And obviously, depending on your computer speed and type, it's going to take a you know different amount of time. Obviously, this is not very accurate right now, <laughs> 120 hours. My guess is it'll take probably about 15 minutes on my computer. So once this is done, catch back up, and I'll show you the second half of the workflow. All right, so as you'll see up here, the video has successfully exported so we're going to close that we're going to quit imovie and 
we are going to get rid of that. And the next thing we're gonna do is open up Garmin Verb Edit. So I'm gonna post a link to this software down in the description. But basically this is Garmin's uh, video editing software that allows you to uh, put the data over the uh, you know, video. So we're gonna create a new video. And since I have a Garmin, I'm gonna go to connect.garmin.com and sign in. So once you're signed in here, you can go and find the ride that you are trying to overlay data for. So this ride just happens to be this one, Campton Hills. And if you are uh, using a Wahoo, it's going to be a very similar process. Basically, you need to export the .fit file. So on Garmin Connect, it just happens to be over here and export original. And your .fit file is right there. So we're gonna close that out. We are going to import the file we just exported from iMovie. We're gonna import that. We're gonna do import only. We're gonna select done. And then we are going to go over and add this video down to the timeline below. <clears throat> so you guys will see this is now one big clip, which just, which just allows us to only sync up the data one time instead of multiple times and having to export each time. So, in my opinion, this is the fastest way to do it, but if there is a better way, please let me know in the comments because I would love to not have to use three different <laughs> video editing tools. Uh, so on my computer, we're gonna go back a second because I was talking over myself. So you're gonna select G-Metrics over here. You're gonna import G-Metrics. You're gonna select on my computer and browse to the location of your .fit file. So mine is in downloads. We're gonna open that up. The map is gonna pop up. So double check this is the right activity that you're trying to overlay. Then you're gonna select use this log. And at first you're gonna see these, you know, standard uh, overlay data. So I've actually created a template or a template which has exactly what I want, the laps, the speed, the power, the heart rate, etc. But basically what you can do is you go to gauges and you can select your data type. So let's say we want cadence. So here's all the ones you can search for or all the different types of overlays you can use. And if you want a specific one, say we want this one, we can drag it wherever we want and have it set like that. Um, and then from here, once you have everything set how you want, you can use this button and save a template so that you don't have to create that every single time. So I'm gonna delete that for now because this is the template I want, but I actually don't want laps on there because we only did one lap. We're gonna close that out make that a little bit bigger and we're going to drag this down just a tad one thing i don't like is to have this little bar here because i don't know what's actually at the top or not but we'll just aim it like that so yeah this is obviously not the best software in the world but it's the best option i've found that's on the market maybe one day when i have a lot more time i'll make one but <laughs> until then uh, that's that one thing I forgot to mention is when you are uh, adjusting this you can actually change the colors and size scale rotate um, however you want so that's another thing to keep in mind I have the little orange and black 
theme going on. So we're going to keep it at that. Okay. So next thing we want to do is you have your footage there. You have your overlays how you want. I'm actually going to adjust this just a bit because I don't like how it clips off the screen when I'm at high wattages. It's very strange how it does that. Anyways, so you have your power and not your power, but all the gauges you want on the screen, those are all there. And then you're gonna hit G metrics sync. So you are going to want to find a point in the race where you know, or the any footage you have where you, where you know where you are. So I'm gonna mute my computer and I'm gonna make sure we roll up to this little corner here. Usually I like to pick a corner and head to and like stop it like when I'm at the middle of the turn. So we're gonna head over to this map here now. And I know it's this corner that I'm looking at. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more. And I like to hit satellite just so I know exactly I can just tell a little bit better where the actual turn is. And I like to zoom in basically as much as possible. I think that's pretty good. And then we're going to take this guy. Of course it like messes up my position, but Oh, I know why, because I rode down to the right before we started. So, yeah, you should move move your indicator before you zoom in, because otherwise it, it changes it and you don't know where you are. So you can see my indicator is like right on that corner, but I want to get it exact because even if you're like a second off, you can tell in the video and no one no one likes when the power is a second off. You know, you want to know exactly when you attack what that power is. Um, so you can use these little, little quick, quick uh, movements, arrows, and basically find, like, position this exactly where you are on the map itself. So I think that's pretty close. So I'm going to select done. And then what I like to do is just go to a corner or a spot where I know I'm like, I like attacked or something. So this one is actually pretty good. I, I think I put in a little bit of a move or tried to bridge up to this guy up front. Um, yeah, so that's, that's pretty close. Uh, I also didn't get the memo on this group ride. I'm going to post this, this group ride video probably Sunday, but everyone was wearing their state championship jerseys. And I didn't get the memo to wear mine. <laughs> so that was kind of funny, but yeah, I think that's pretty good. And once you do that, make sure you adjust the map again, cause it might be slightly off. All right, I think that's pretty good. So we can select done or export. And again, choose the place you want to save your video to. And I usually call this with data. So now we have to wait for this to export. So this software actually takes pretty long, surprisingly. Um, 
It's usually like 30 minutes actually, which is like a long time for like an hour of footage. So once this is done exporting, I'll show you the final step I do to complete my videos and hopefully that will help you out. All right, so once you are done exporting from Verb Edit, my final step in my workflow is to open up Premiere and do any edits necessary here. So if it's adding text, adding animations, um, anything like that. So Premiere is like the one of the best softwares you can use for adding, you know, text to your video or you know, animating a clip in and out, adding audio. So you really don't want to do that in like iMovie or um, a verb edit because there's just not as many options as Premiere or something like Final Cut Pro has. So hopefully this data overlay and workflow tutorial helped you out. One last thing I want to note is I'm currently on Mac OS 10.14.5. So verb edit has been kind of janky in the past with specific versions of Mac. So if you're having any problems, check your version, maybe update. I'm on the currently the latest version. So if you, you know, are having problems, check that you can update your system and then check if verb edit has any updates. So again, if you have any other questions, let me know in the comments below. Would love to help out and check out this description for the link to Garmin verb edit. Thanks for watching. Again, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.